Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about the Bias Tape Maker, Alison Glass Sunprint Fabrics, the book called Oompa, Quilt Now Magazine. I'll be demonstrating how to make a strap with thicker fabrics using nylon strapping as an insert, and there's several giveaways on tonight's show. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday or Monday afternoon, depending on what part of the world that you live in. I see Sheila's watching, Yvonne's also watching, Beverly from Missouri. So thank you everyone so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be here tonight. So just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also everything that I'm scheduled to talk about I link to in the description, so if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So just a really quick update, update before we get to the notion of the week. Uh, we have two new acrylic templates in the shop. Um, there's an acrylic template for the Tudor bag and it's just one acrylic template for this particular pattern. And also the acrylic template set for the satellite bag, which is several pieces right here and just a reminder the acrylic templates are completely optional they're not necessary to make any of the patterns but i know some people make a lot of the same project especially if they're making things for craft fairs or to sell online and in some of those cases the acrylic templates can make the projects a lot faster to cut out your fabrics for multiples of the same thing i know um, that quilt that i showed you last sunday that cascade quilt that i made from a Victoria Finley wolf pattern. I purchased the acrylic template for that particular quilt and it made the cutting so, so much faster. So um, if that's you, if you're making multiples, um, again, the Tudor bag and the satellite bag are the two new acrylic template sets in the shop and we will soon have um, the Park Sling backpack sets and also the Aragon bag in maybe a week or two and I'll let you know on the live show as soon as both of those come in. So. The, the notion of the week, um, I a couple weeks ago I asked in the Facebook group what notions or tools people would like demonstrated and a few people, let's see, I wrote it down, Kathy, Alex, and Jules commented in the Facebook group that they would like to see um, the bias tape maker demonstrated. So the bias tape maker comes in several different sizes. The, the one that I used in the demonstration is for a half inch bias tape maker, but there's other sizes as well. So um, enjoy the video and then I'll come back and give you a few other little notes about uh, what I demonstrated, so enjoy. You also need a bias tape maker, and this particular one is made by Clover, and again, this is the half inch size of the bias tape maker. Let me show you how I pressed all of my 30 inch strips. So you'll need a seam ripper to use with the bias tape maker. And you just wanna slide the end of the fabric. I sort of make a U with it so that it fits in this U-shaped end of the bias tape maker. And then take your seam ripper or a pin is fine too and just get the fabric going so it comes out the other end. So then just take your iron and as the fabric comes out of the end of the bias tape maker, just go ahead and give it a press. And if you'd like to, you can use some steam, but you're gonna press that all the way down. So I found that for those long 30 inch strips, this is the option that I prefer to do. It was just easier for me. But for those short strips, I liked using the interfacing, or you can use um, that a bit of uh, washable glue stick. Okay, so you repeat this process for all 30 of sorry, not all 30, all of the 30 inch strips. For those nine inch strips, if you prefer, you can use either the glue stick or I use this Wonder Web on mine. If you use the glue stick or the Wonder Web, you wanna make sure to use your pressing cloth to protect your iron from any um, adhesive accidentally getting on it. So I cut a piece of the Wonder Web the same length as my strip and I'm just going to go ahead and feed it into the bias tape maker. Okay. 
And again, you want to make sure you use um, a pressing cloth, but I'm going to skip that here just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And the same process applies, just run the fabric through the bias tape maker. And what the adhesive or the glue stick, if you choose to use a glue stick, what that does is holds the whole piece in place. I find that especially for the short strips for the weaving, it really helps having the whole strip held down so it doesn't come apart. As you can see, the one that I did with no interfacing, it's sort of, you know, apt to hang loose a little bit, but this one is held in place with the interfacing. So it's up to you, whatever your preference. Okay, so that was my demonstration using the bias tape maker. Um, in that video, I was assembling strips for some fabric weaving that I did for an Easter basket pattern that I put out last year as a video. Um, there's several different applications for why you would make bias binding. Um, if you're binding a small project such as a pot holder, you'll follow those same instructions for using the bias tape ma maker, except you may also consider pressing it one more time in half so that those um, uh, raw edges shown on the center crease will be enclosed. Um, there's, uh, you can use it for piping if you're having a little bit of piping detailing on a bag. There's a whole bunch of reasons why you could be using a bias tape maker and again um, it's available in several different sizes and if you're using it for um, a quilt or another project you'll likely want to skip that fusible web but I found it really handy for assembling the strips when I was um, doing the fabric weaving because as, as you can see from the video, the fusible web really holds the layers of fabric in place. So when I'm moving my strips around, um, they stay neatly pressed um, before I get it over to the other table for the fabric weaving. Um, so I needed a little help in choosing some fabrics. I'm busy at work working on the free pattern and video for the first book club project. Um, you've probably heard me talk about book club before, but in case you haven't, the link is in the description with all the information. Um, so I have a pattern that I'm working on for book club and it'll be available in two different sizes. So that means I need to pick out fabric for two different bags. So um, based on sort of the theme and the setting for the first book for book club, which is called The Sewing Machine, I decided on sort of a vintage -y looking fabric and also kind of a vintage -y looking material also. This is a bark cloth fabric. Um, so this is the fabric that I chose for the first bag. It's designed by Outback Wife. And you, I'm not sure if you can see the texture on camera, but it is a bark cloth and there's a bit of metallic. Yeah, you can see the metallic. I can see it on my screen as well. So I'm trying to decide on the second fabric to go along with it. I have the same print in several different colorways and I just couldn't decide which one would look nicest with the blue. So I'm gonna audition a few fabrics for you. Let me know which one's your favorite. So I've got four fabrics over here. So the first one is black. So I'm for sure using the blue. So um, black is the first choice. I have this really cool, um, I'm just gonna call it brown. It's a little bit of a raspberry-ish color. White, which I've used in another project. You may have seen this one before and then the green over here. This is my last choice. So let me know in the comments what your favorite out of the four choices is. Again, it's green, white, brown, or black. So um, I'd like to start getting these cut out tonight, hopefully finish up the pattern tomorrow. Uh, we have some filming to get done to get the video ready for you, but we're gonna be discussing the first book from Book Club on March 12th. That's our Tuesday live show at our usual time slot, which is 7 p.m. Central Time. And um, after we discuss the first book club project at the end of the show, I'll have the free pattern and video for you. I'm super excited about it. It's a really nice looking pattern, at least um, in my opinion. I, I, feel like, I feel like it's really interesting, um, very detailed for a free pattern, and I like the shape of the bag, so I'm really excited to share that with you in just a few more weeks. So Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show uh, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and type either Bag Lady or Bag Dude in the comments right now. I really appreciate the support, the support of the bag making community, um, either on our live shows and in the Facebook group if you're on Facebook. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in to watch the shows every week and um, thank you so much for doing that. All right, so the new fabric that I've added to my stash this week is actually a bundle that I purchased from the Allison Glass website. The fabric line is called Sunprint 2019, and I'm going to pop over to the side camera and show you the fabrics. 
Okay, so lately I admit I've just been buying one or two fabrics from a fabric line, but this week I purchased the whole line of Sunprint 2019. So Allison Glass over the years has done several iterations of uh, what she calls sun prints. So it's mostly monochromatic um, fabric lines in great pops of color. So in sun print 2019, there's three different designs in lots of different colors. So this is the first one. These are all text prints. You know I love rainbow colors. You know I love text prints. So I super love this, this particular um, design and I'm going to just flip through the colors real quick so you could see all of the colors. This would be, I mean just looking at this um, stack together makes me super happy. I like that the text is not black or white, it's a color to match the background of the fabric which makes the colors really pop. So the second design in Sunprint 2019 is this floral print and again here's all of the colors in this particular design and I'll flip through the fabrics one by one again so you can see all of them. So this one's not as monochromatic as the other two. It's got um, little flowers which are a little slightly different coloring than the background fabric but still a gorgeous rainbow in my opinion. And then the last design in Sunprint 2019 is this all over design in white and again I'll give you a really pretty side view. So this one's super interesting because this is a white background, but it's a neon pink, which is really cool. Here's a not quite super black, kind of more of a charcoal, and then the rest of the colors. So again, you can either find these by the bundle or just you know choose a few of your favorite colors. And I've linked to in the description. Again, I purchased these from the Allison Glass website, but you can find them also at your local quilt shop or other shops online. Um, I just love purchasing from Allison Glass because I usually get like a little extra sticker or a little catalog in with my order, a little extra fun treat. So I enjoy it. I, I enjoy purchasing directly from her. Um, so we'd like to invite you now if you enjoy our live shows, if you enjoy my bag making videos and tutorial videos, if you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and hit that share button right now and share this sewing video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, um, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, I hope you will subscribe so that you can be notified of our future live shows and new videos posted to the channel. And regardless, either on Facebook or YouTube, um, the likes help us out so much and the like is a little graphic of a thumbs up. So thank you so much for doing that. We really, really appreciate that. All right, so I have a book and a magazine to show you this week. Um, the book is called Oompa, which is a really fun name, and then I also have Quilt Now magazine to share with you. So again, I'm going to jump over to that side camera and show both of those to you right now. Okay, so this is the book Oompa, and it was written by Beth Helfter, and I purchased it, this book from Beth's website, so I was able to get a signed copy, which is really cool. I always love adding signed copies to my sewing library. So this is actually a brand new um, method for quilting and making half square triangles. So half square triangles, if you're not familiar, let me see if I can find a really good uh, picture to share with you. A half square triangle, uh, I'm just gonna have to, oh, here we go. Why not just open the book, Sarah, to the first page? <laughs> so a half square triangle is a square comprised of um, a half triangle and a half triangle. So th that, that comprises the square. So the brilliance of this book is before I usually had to sort of piece these one by one or in the half square triangle block of the month that I'm participating in um, several at a time using foundation paper piecing but Beth has a brand new method for assembling these using an accordion method so when I first saw this online I couldn't figure out how this accordion of all these fabrics sewn together was going to end up as tons of half square triangles but I got the book in the mail I read through everything and it was sort of like a light bulb going off in my head, like an aha moment. So um, sewing these half square triangles, uh, well, this, sewing this little accordion results in very quickly getting to cut apart your half square triangles. It's super fast and easy. Um, I'll leave that secret sauce in the book, but um, it's super brilliant. And um, the book also comes with, besides that um, wonderful method, several quilting projects. So I'm going to flip through the book, show you all the projects. 
This is a great uh, Christmas tree, something for the holidays, a nice table runner. This one's called Penny Whistle Pop. I really like that dark background on this particular project. This is the cover quilt, Scattered Stars. This one's called Cosmos Concertina. Here's another one, a smaller, quicker project just to try out the method used in the book. And then uh, a few more, some applique, some borders to try out. And that's it. And there's a picture of Beth right there. So again, this is a fantastic technique, something new to try out. I really enjoyed reading up on the technique in the book. It was really fast and easy to understand. And, and again, the book is called Oompa. And I also have a second thing to show you in my book review section of the show, and that is Quilt Now magazine. So a couple weeks ago, I showed you a different quilting magazine. This week, I'm showing you Quilt Now. Um, in this particular issue, issue 59, there was actually an insert of the Baker Street bag, which I know many of you have already made before. Um, but I wanted to share the rest of the issue of this magazine with you. So there's quilted projects, some articles to read. Um, here's the very beginning of the magazine and you can see all of the projects that are included in that issue. So um, some accessories to sew, majority quilts. I really like this uh, Queen of Hearts pillow. That's a really clever design. So I like reading these magazines, not just for the projects, but for new fabrics and new notions. I like reading about those as well because that's how I get educated about um, cool, cool things that I could share with you on the show. New books. And here's some of the projects. So I'm just gonna flip through some of the projects really quickly. Um, there's both large and small quilted projects. And then I noticed in this, this issue, there were a few accessories as well. So here's one of the articles. This one's about die cutting. I like the modern fabrics used in the projects. Here's one about long arming. There's that queen of hearts pillow. That one's applique. Here's one with some drunkard's path. This one's called fruit salad. And all the templates, by the way, are included in the magazine, so no need to go online and download anything. Everything's included for you there. And I wanted to get to that little accessory project that I saw in here as well. All right, here we go, a laptop case. That one's pretty cool. And, uh, Here's another one, a weekend wash bag. So there's another small accessory. So quilts and bags in the issue. So again, this is Quilt Now Magazine. This particular issue is issue 59, um, but you can find back issues on their website as well. This one is published in the UK. Um, I believe you can find um, E, I'm not sure for magazines if they're called eBooks or e-magazines, but most magazines these days also have digital subscriptions, so um, especially if you're in another country, that's really handy to be able to subscribe digitally. So again, that was Quilt Now magazine. Quilt Now actually sent me four extra copies of the magazine to give away on the show, so um, we're going to give those away in a little bit. Um, how, it, how that's going to work for the live giveaways of the four issues is Danny's going to have me draw a random number in a little bit, actually four random numbers since there's four issues and it's going to be based on comments. So make sure, I have a couple other questions to ask later on in the show, make sure you're commenting and answering the questions um, because that'll give you a better chance to win the magazines. And also we have our usual giveaway at the end of the show for everyone to enter, even people that watch the recording later on in the week. So uh, my first question for you, be sure to answer, uh, what is your favorite sewing and quilting magazine? So go ahead and type that in the comments right now. Um, I'm, I'm a little sad because my most favorite magazine ever, Stitch Magazine, uh, was discontinued a few years ago, but I felt like Stitch Magazine really got me because Stitch was always heavy into the bags and accessories, which obviously you know that's kind of my area, what I'm interested in sewing the most. Um, I, I'm not sure if you can still find back issues of that, but again, Stitch Magazine was one of my favorites. Um, I also like uh, Quilt Now, which I just shared with you, love patchwork and quilting. I feel like, um, especially the UK magazines re really have it down pat. My eye kind of, uh, when I go to the fabric store and wait in line and see all the magazines in the magazine rack, my eyes tend to gravitate toward a lot of the UK magazines. 
um, uh, anyway, um, thanks for answering that question in the comments. Um, I have another demonstration for you tonight. Um, I think on the Tuesday show last week, someone asked how to make straps with thicker fabrics like Harris Tweed. And uh, when using thicker fabrics, you might not necessarily want to assemble them um, like in the same manner that you would for quilting cottons, for instance, uh, pressing kind of like double fold bias tape, so four layers of fabric. So um, here's a method that you can use for some of your thicker fabrics like hair tweeds or wool. Um, so I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you that demonstration now. Okay, so the materials that you'll need for this method is your strap fabric. So whatever substrate that is, I'm using quilting cotton for this demonstration just because it's easiest and you'll need some sort of, um, this is optional, but some sort of insert, either nylon strapping, um, you can also use a bit of foam interfacing, uh, batting, fleece, uh, whatever you'd like if you decide to go with that optional insert. So um, I'm actually using nylon for mine. Um, so I, when I cut my nylon, I like to burn the edges just to seal them so that I'm working with it, it doesn't start coming unraveled which it's already starting to do. So um, if you're using nylon strapping, you can burn it. If you're using cotton or you're not sure what the material is, I would just hold off on that um, just because you don't want to light anything on fire accidentally, but the nylon uh, will melt uh, when burned. Okay, so I've got one fully finished strap over here. Um, I've got it all top stitched. There's nylon on the inside and the nylon just gives it a little bit of extra stability. But again, if your fabric is on the thicker side and you feel that the, the insert will make everything a little bit too thick for your liking, you can go ahead and skip that insert. So let me show you how to assemble these. So first I've got my strap fabric cut out. I've just got a shorter piece, but you'll wanna just measure your strap fabric, the length that you would like your finished strap to be. Um, if you're making it an adjustable strap, you'll want it to be at least 42 inches long, um, longer if you prefer to have a really long adjustable strap. So how to decide how wide to cut this. So my nylon strapping, if you're using an insert, my nylon strapping is one inch wide, which is the size that I would like my finished strap to be. So I went ahead and cut my strap fabric times two. So one inch times two is two inches my seam allowance is going to be a quarter of an inch, so I need to add a quarter of an inch times two, which is a half an inch, and then I added a little bit of extra so that I could easily get the strapping inside, so an extra quarter of an inch. So I cut this in total two and three quarters of an inch wide. All right, so to sew this, I'm going to sew right sides together by lining up the long edges, and again, that's gonna be a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I've got a piece that I've already sewn right here. Let's get this out of the way. So. I'm not sure if you can see that on your screen, but I use the yellow thread to sew this right sides together. Again, that's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to actually use a bodkin to thread this nylon strapping, or if you're using the foam or fleece, um, you can use this same method. So this is a bodkin, and I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp that onto one end of the strapping. And there's a little metal ring, uh, which I'm gonna push down over here. So I'm gonna, first turn this right side out and I'm going to use the fast turn turning tool and you may have a different turning tool in your stash but the fast turn tool is a tube and a little metal wire and there's a corkscrew on this end. I'll hold it over the fabric so you can see. So that's the little metal corkscrew that will be pulling the fabric right side out. So first I'm going to go ahead and insert the, the metal tube through the opening in the fabric and then just push the fabric down on the tube. So next, this metal corkscrew goes through the fast turn tube, and I'm gonna hook that metal corkscrew on one end of the fabric just to grab onto it. So I usually like to kind of aim um, near my stitches over here, and then I'm gonna twist it so the corkscrew comes out the fabric. The corkscrew is what pulls everything through the tube, and I, I lost my corkscrew. Let me push it through again. Okay. All right, so as you can see, it easily pulls everything right side out. And once the fabric is pulled through, I'm just gonna go ahead and twist the corkscrew to release it. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the fabric before I insert that nylon strapping. So you have a couple options. You can either press the seam to one side or you can press the seam so that it's centered, kind of like on the back side of the strap. So that's what I'm gonna do. Either method is fine. There's not one that's better than the other, just your personal preference. 
Okay, so now that that's pressed, I'm gonna go ahead and take the bodkin, the metal end is going to go through one end of the fabric. And then the purpose of the bodkin is just, you just kind of push the fabric down and it allows you to hang on to the strapping and pull it through. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention also that when I cut that um, nylon strapping, I cut it maybe an inch and a half to two inches shorter than the fabric that I used for the strap, just so that I could cut it, uh, leave it clear of the seam allowance so that it doesn't add a lot of unnecessarily, unnecessary bulk. So depending on how you're assembling the strap, you can either leave the edges raw or you can press the edges toward the inside. And I just used my fingers to kind of push them to the inside and then give the fabric a good press before top stitching. So again, this is what the fully finished strap looks like. I used an eighth of an inch seam allowance to top stitch. And then as you can see from the backside, there's my seam. So the nylon strapping is fully enclosed. And again, you can use foam interfacing, fleece, batting, um, or no insert at all um, for your straps. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Hopefully that answered the question about um, how to make straps with thicker fabrics. Uh, so I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, do you usually use hardware or rivets on your straps or do you prefer just a planer strap, um, whatever bag you're making? Um, I like using hardware because I feel like it gives a more um, upscale look to a handmade bag. Uh, depending on how I'm feeling or the design of the bag, I'll add rivets on occasion, but um, hardware always makes a bag, in my opinion, look a little bit nicer. So let's get over to the giveaways for those four copies of the Quilt Now magazine. Uh, they're still shiny and new in their packaging. Danny's gonna um, have me draw a few numbers and we'll, we'll draw four live winners and I'm gonna write those down. So I'm gonna grab my pen. All right, Danny. Random numbers or what? Uh, what number through what? Uh, one through one twenty. One through one twenty. How about seventy two? Okay. Now one through twenty. Uh, uh, twelve. Susan S is the winner of the first copy, and all four winners. If you will kindly, after the show, either tonight or tomorrow, whenever you have time. Um, email me so that I can get your address to mail your prize. And my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. That's Sarah with no H. 1 through 134. Uh, how about uh, 2? 1 through 20. Uh, 11. All right. Dorothy Shack is the second winner of uh, the copy of Quilt Now magazine. Dorothy Shack, writing that down. All right, thanks, Danny. Um, how about we go with 45? And again, we're just going through um, comments that we've had all throughout tonight's show. Get one through 20. Uh, seven. All right, Pam Carley is the third winner. Congratulations, Pam. All right, one more. How about uh, 24? It's one through 140 now. One through 140, yeah, 24. Okay. And uh, one. Okay, Rebecca Cochran is the fourth winner. So congratulations to you all. Uh, don't forget to email me so that I can uh, get a hold of your address and thank you so much for doing that. All right, um, let's see. Um, all right, so I'm gonna announce the winner of last week's giveaway and then I'm going to answer some questions live. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type that in the comments right now. Either a bag making question, question about a notion or tool, uh, go ahead and type that in the comments. I'll answer as many questions as I can live. My husband Danny puts those up on the screen for me. And um, getting over to the winner of last week's giveaway, the prize package from Crafty Gemini. Last week's winner was Sam Chandler, so congratulations to you, Sam. I've already contacted Sam via social media and just waiting to hear back about an address for shipping, so congratulations again to you, Sam. Uh, we have another giveaway at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that, but I'm gonna answer First, some live questions. All right, take it away, Danny. All right, Margie says, Sarah, what is the name of that turning tool? So this is called the fast turn tool and I've linked to that in the comments. It, it, it is made in several different sizes. I use probably 99% of the time the half inch size. 
uh, which is really handy for anything bag making related. If you're making something maybe garment related, maybe spaghetti straps, like really thin straps, you might need a different size tool, but I feel like the half inch size works for just about everything that I need. Mary says, hi everyone. Does anyone think the park sling is too hard for a first try at bag making? Uh, maybe some people can let us know in the comments, people that have made the park sling. I know Michelle Graham was counting in the Facebook group earlier in the week and she said 107 people had made it already, or at least that posted in the Facebook group. I know a lot of people um, make bags and uh, don't post the bags online, so that number might be higher. Um, but if you're watching right now and you've already made the bag, maybe you'll let us know in the comments um, if you thought it was easy or hard. Most of my patterns are intermediate level patterns and so, uh, I don't know. Well, when Danny makes it as his first bag, we'll see what he thinks if it was easy or hard. Ruth says, how do you keep ribbon from fraying? Uh, that's a really good question. So uh, I, I use a lot of decorative ribbon in projects. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna pronounce it wrong because I always do uh, the grow grain ribbon. Hopefully I was close on that one. Uh, you can always use a bit of seam sealant on the ends after you cut them to stop the ribbon from unraveling. Um, so a couple brands of seam sealants are Fray Check or Fray Block. I like using Fray Block, but either of those will work uh, for that purpose. Trisha says, question, what type of foot do you need to sew cork and where do you find them? So uh, depending on, and I'm not sure if this is a humidity issue or what, depending on the time of year, sometimes I can get away with using my regular foot on my sewing machine. Most of the time I just go ahead and proactively put my Teflon foot on the machine and the Teflon foot uh, helps the foot glide more easily over things like leathers or vinyls or sometimes cork. You can also use a walking foot um, instead of a Teflon foot, but uh, it's good to do a little test so uh, before you start sewing with the cork and when you test so you can check for if your foot is gliding smoothly over the cork, if you need to adjust your tension or stitch length, things like that. I always recommend when you change up and use different substrates to do those little tests just so when you're working on the actual projects, you don't have a little um, a little stitch or stitches tight together, tension problems, anything like that. So get your little scrap and test everything out before you get to sewing on your project. Kathy says, what yardage did you buy of each Allison glass print? So I bought the half yard bundle just because I thought it might be nice to have some of those fabrics for bag linings of um, either like a medium sized bag or small pouches. Um, but they do have, I, I noticed online, some shops have fat quarter bundles or even fat, fat eighth bundles available. Uh, Teresa says, do you have to clean your iron since you don't use a pressing cloth? And if, if so, what do you use? That is a good thing to demonstrate on the notion of the week in iron cleaner. I'm writing that down. I'll get to that pretty soon on the list. Um, my iron, let me grab my iron and show you. Uh, I don't think I've cleaned this iron since I've gotten it, which was not the case with my previous iron. So I have, I've had this iron since 2013. I use the Singer Expert Finish Iron. Put it like that so you can read it. Um, my previous iron was a Rowenta and that thing was covered in brown gunk, let me tell you. I, I had to clean that iron all the time. I'm not sure if I'm just uh, getting better at sewing and working with interfacings, but uh, I don't know. I usually don't use a present cloth, but I do recommend that you do use one to avoid the messiness on your iron. I will talk about an iron cleaner on a future show. I could see that it's uh, reflecting off the camera. Sorry, Danny. Uh, there's several iron cleaners out there as well as some homemade rem remedies that you can use with uh, combinations of baking powder, salt. I've seen people use dryer sheets. That would be an interesting topic on a future show, how to clean your iron. I'll write that down. <laughs> Cheryl says, what is the difference between bark cloth and C? I'm assuming that was supposed to be quilting cotton. So the bark cloth, I'm not sure if this comes up properly on camera, but the bark cloth is a really textured fabric. It's not smooth. Um, it's, it's commonly used for upholstery curtains, uh, decorating the home, that kind of thing. So it's got a, a bit of an extra weight to it and it's also got a texture and the weave of the fabric is definitely different. So different than quilting cotton. I didn't find it hard to sew at all really, um, but it's just a different different look and there's not uh, a huge amount of prints available in the bark cloth like there is for the quilting cotton. 
Ingrid says, have you ordered the new Tulip Pink Pinkerville yet? Actually, I ordered it last year. Um, it should be coming, it should be arriving to shops in a few weeks. Um, I think the estimate was middle of March. Uh, as soon as we get it in, we'll get that listed up on the website and let you know in the live shows and on social media. I'm super excited. Uh, Liz says, I have asked this question two times previously, but I know you get so many. Have you ever considered making braided handles for bags? That's a really good, um, actually, now that you mentioned it on Instagram a few weeks ago, I saw a video for making a braided leather uh, belt for a garment, but that would be really cool to make braided handles for bags. So I'm going to write that down. That would be a really cool uh, demonstration on the show, braided handles. Um, Christina says, uh, Mary, my hubby has never sewn anything and is going for the park sling. I can't wait to see that. Uh, Danny's versus uh, Christina's husband. That'll be uh, a bit of a face off. Melissa says, um, it was easy. Um, I think she's talking about the park sling. It was easy when following the video. So there's an optional video avail available for the park sling backpack. Um, there's also an option just to purchase the PDF pattern if you don't feel like you wanted the video. Um, or there's a bundle for both, uh, the PDF and the video for $15. Pamela says, did Danny start his bag yet? Uh, no, he, he got as far as choosing the fabric, taping up the pattern pieces. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna, I, th I thought it would be interesting to time him how long it takes to cut the fabric out and attach to the interfacing. I know it usually takes me a few hours, so let's see how long it takes him to accomplish that, that first task in the project. Carla says, what is the difference between the two sizes of sling backpacks? I see many photos, but it's hard to see the difference in size. So actually the pattern cover and the main photograph on my website for the Park Sling Backpack has both sizes. So I'm holding size large, which is a black and white print with zoo animals, like there's a zebra and a skunk on it. And my daughter Violet is holding the size small, which was a black backpack with swallows on it. Um, but that's a good, I feel like that's a good representation of size small and size large. Unfortunately, they're in the basement right now, so I can't show them to you right this second. Um, but I think I saw today maybe someone posted three park slings, maybe one large and two smalls. And uh, there's also some uh, photographs of people wearing them, which I think is always helpful too. Lynn says, I've been working on a bag, it's quilted, and a lot of my, sti my stitches skip any idea why. So. Uh, a few things might be coming into play, and I know you mentioned it was quilted. Quilted. I'm not sure if you're using uh, some sort of spray adhesive, uh, maybe if you're using batting or interfacing that you're quilting it. Um, skip stitches, uh, maybe you need a new needle. Sometimes machines are particular with thread also. Um, I've seen people say in, in the past that a particular brand of thread wasn't, work, wasn't playing nicely with their sewing machine, so that might be one of uh, the things as well and I also whenever I'm having a trouble with my sewing machine like with my computer um, if I'm ever having computer issues when I'm trying to watch videos or download patterns the first step is always to restart your device uh, I feel like that's the same thing with the sewing machine uh, by restart the device with the sewing machine I mean uh, rethread your top thread and rethread your bobbin so check those things at the basic and and see where you're at uh, Linda says, I'd like to add a, a tab and a D-ring to my park sling bag for keys. Where's the best place to put it? Uh, so I'm not sure, if, I'm assuming you want it on the inside of the backpack. Um, that's a good question. Probably the area closest to where the zippers are. Um, I don't know, I, I wonder if even inside the zipper pocket to keep it super secure. Uh, otherwise, I'd probably add it to the side where the, the zipper is. Debbie says, Sarah, could you share tips on how to best store the foam interfacing corks and stabilizers? Any tips? So I, I if possible, I always like to keep as many things rolled as I can, especially the cork, uh, because having creases in it from folding it is pretty annoying. I shared, I think it was after the holiday, holidays, I shared an over-the-door organizer that I bought for myself that had a, a bottom compartment that I have my interfacing and my rolls of cork in, or at least a couple rolls. Um, so I'll have to check back and see what, what date that organizer was posted. Um, but it was on one of my Social Sunday live shows, and I'll, I'll check on that and I'll let you know. What the yarn minder? The yarn minder? The oh, magnet. yeah. Danny reminded me. Uh, Paula Vanderbilt in the Facebook group made the yarn minder bag, which is a pattern that came out a few weeks ago. 
Um, the pattern was written for a knitting or crochet bag, but she made her yarn minder taller. Um, and I think she posted the measurements, how much taller she made hers in the Facebook group, but she made hers, the one with the zipper lid, and she stores her cork in there, which I thought was super brilliant and a great idea and to keep everything nice and clean inside the bag. Jane says, have you ever had the Teflon start to wear off the bottom of your foot? I, I have and was wondering if there was paint to touch it up. Um, I actually haven't encountered that problem and I've had my Teflon foot for, who, probably for seven or eight years now. Um, and mine was pretty inexpensive. I think mine was about $12. So I don't know about how it would work with using the paint to touch it up, but if you, if your foot was relatively inexpensive, you might just want to purchase an extra one or um, throw out your old one and replace it. Deborah says, I just use a dryer sheet to clean my iron. Yes, a dryer sheet is a quick and handy thing. A lot of people have dryer sheets in their home. Uh, easy way to clean the iron off. Gemma says, is there another name for bark cloth? Um, if there is, I'm actually not aware of it. Uh, if somebody else knows the answer to that though, uh, go ahead and type that answer in the comments and Daniel watch for that. Um, as far as I know, I just know it by the name bark cloth though. Um, Audrey says, I think she was asking about the difference with canvas. Oh, okay, thank you. So bark cloth is a bit different than canvas. Uh, it's, to be honest, it's the weave. Canvas is just a smoother weave, has a smoother weave to it. The, the bark cloth has a bit, bit of a texture. Um, Gail says, I use a magic eraser to clean my iron. It's, it's not nonstick. Oh, that's a good one too. I'm not sure if I've heard that one before. Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about that on a future show and I'll sort of assemble everything that people have recommended and give those a try. Even though my iron is not dirty, maybe I'll have to, uh, my old iron, get it dirt, nice and dirty for you. Charlene says, do you ever use an iron shoe? Um, I actually did purchase one years ago and an iron shoe is just sort of a, a metal strap that goes around your iron with, uh, it covers the plate of your iron to keep it clean. I believe it's made of Teflon. Um, that was before we moved here, so I must have lost it in the move, but I can certainly get another one. Um, iron shoe, I'm writing all these down. Mary says, what do you use for pressing cloths? Um, generally I use it, if I was using a pressing cloth, which I do from time to time, I just use a, a cut, cut off piece from an old sheet or I have a bolt of muslin fabric that I, when I made more garments, I used it for fitting patterns before I cut into my actual fabric. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you purchase from a store as a pressing cloth. It can be uh, you know, a scrap of fabric, white preferably, so you can see better what you're doing. Um, the muslin that I have is white and muslin's really an, muslin is really inexpensive to purchase if you just need to purchase a little piece of it at the fabric store as well. Kathy says, does your fabric ever pucker or gather when top stitching your handles? Maybe should, maybe I should increase the stitch. So um, when top stitching handles or thicker areas such as the top area of the bag when the bag's finished, I always like to increase my stitch length. Um, generally I increase from two and a half millimeters, which is what I normally sew with to three millimeters for top stitching. Another thing is you might need to adjust your presser foot tension. I don't know if you saw the book review that I did a few weeks ago, um, you and your sewing machine, but it talked about all things related to sewing machines, um, the ins and outs like the bobbins, um, troubleshooting when things go wrong. And part of the page that I opened up to, which um, I'm just remembering it because I mentioned it recently in the Facebook group, um, there were a couple photos of uh, two pieces of fabric sewn right sides together and um, in one of the photos the presser foot tension was a little bit too tight and so the two layers of fabric had shifted so you might want to check on your presser foot tension and you can always test it out with a couple scraps of fabric um, um, something similar to what you're using in your project but yes um, if you need to adjust that it can make a difference as far as you know sewing two pieces of fabric that are the exact same when you get to the end one of the fabrics, usually the bottom, has shifted. Um, Fan says, any suggestions on how to feed the zipper pull back on the zipper? I spent all afternoon trying to put one on and never succeeded. So um, a fork, um, everyone has a fork in their home. I have a video on my YouTube channel on how to put zipper heads on a zipper tape or a zipper roll. So if you just wanna go to YouTube and search for um, zipper heads, I think the video should come up and there's a little picture of a fork with 
uh, the, the zipper tape and hopefully that um, gets your zipper head back on because I know that very frustrating and very annoying and makes you start to sweat and get really anxious when your zipper head comes off the tape. Farida says, Sarah, do you think the Juki 2010Q can handle the thickness of the bags we make if we use cork and vinyl? So uh, yes, that's the sewing machine that I have. Never had a problem uh, where I intended to sew something and I could not because of the thickness and my machine not being able to handle it. So my machine, I feel, can handle everything that I throw at it, which uh, is why I've stuck with the same machine uh, year after year. And Tamara says, I use a metal plate rack from a thrift store to hold my stabilizers. Oh, that's a really good idea. I wouldn't have thought of that. I'm sure it was really inexpensive too, being from the thrift store. I see Danny scanning really hard for some good questions. I know a lot of them are coming through. I see one coming through from Harriet. What is the name of the lighter you use for the edge of the strapping? It was just, uh, Danny, do you know what that particular lighter is called? Is it for um, lighting a grill or something? Yeah, I think, yeah. You can use like a lighter that you use for... Yeah, like dollar stores. Yeah, Danny says dollar store um, or like a regular cigarette lighter is fine. Um, in a food stores have them as well. Danny says food stores. Um, I, I suppose if you needed to turn your stove on and and use that, that kind of worries me a little bit, but this is a lot safer. And Bronwyn says, uh, Danny, the over the door organizer was social Sunday, December 6th. Wow, thank you, Bronwyn. Yeah, so that question earlier about how I store my cork and, and interfacing, check social Sunday, December 6th. Thank you, Bronwyn. <laughs> Paula says, um, hi, all, hi all, I cut the main piece for my yarn minder 19 inches tall instead of the 12 inches. So the piece that wraps around the sides that the, the lids attach to, uh, in the pattern instructions, 12 inches tall, and Paula is suggesting for the yarn minder that she made to store her cork, just cut that 19 inches tall instead, and that's the only other thing you need to change. Um, Kathy says, can you use Teflon coating spray to paint a sewing machine foot? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I'm going to be completely honest. I just don't know. Um, I know the Teflon foot is Teflon, but I'm not sure if you can spray it on your foot or not. I don't see why not, but I've not personally done it. All right, Danny's calling that on the questions. Um, I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I'm, I'll be here again on Tuesdays, every Tuesday for Ask Sarah, uh, also at 7 p.m. Central Time, and I answer a lot more questions on the Tuesday show as well. All right, so the giveaway for this week is, let me move my stuff out of the way, a whole stack of sewing books. So some of these are books that I have reviewed on Social Sunday. Um, because I'm reviewing books every Sunday, I can't keep every single book that I review, otherwise I'd have way too many books in the house. But um, a whole stack of books, I've got a couple of uh, templates as well. Um, these will all go to one lucky randomly drawn winner at the end of the day this Saturday. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer this question in the comments before Saturday. My question is, do you store your UFOs, and by UFO I mean unfinished objects or projects in a special place? Just let me know in the comments. Perhaps you have a special plastic container, a special drawer in your sewing, machine, sewing room, um, or a special shelf. Uh, let me know how you store your UFOs in your sewing room. So that's it for Social Sunday. I hope you enjoyed the show. I really had a, a fun time putting everything together for you tonight. And as always, thanks for all the really good suggestions for future demonstrations. So um, have a great week. Happy sewing, and I'll see you again next Sunday. Bye, everybody.